Rudolf Karl Bultmann, German, the 20th of August 1884 to the 30th of July 1976, was a German Lutheran theologian and professor of New Testament at the University of Marburg. He was one of the major figures of early 20th century biblical studies and a prominent voice in liberal Christianity. Boltman is known for his belief that the historical analysis of the New Testament is both futile and unnecessary, given that the earliest Christian literature showed little interest in specific locations. Boltman argued that all that matters is the thatness, not the whatness, of Jesus, i.e. only that Jesus existed, preached, and died by crucifixion matters, not what happened throughout his life. Boltman relied on demythologization, an approach interpreting the mythological elements in the New Testament existentially. Boltman contended that only faith in the kerygma, or proclamation, of the New Testament was necessary for Christian faith, not any particular facts regarding the historical Jesus. <laughs> Background Boltman was born on 20 August 1884 in Wiefelstead, Oldenburg, the son of Arthur Kennedy Boltman, a Lutheran minister. He did his abitur at the Altes Gymnasium in the city of Oldenburg, and studied theology at Tübingen. After three terms, Boltmann went to the University of Berlin for two terms, and finally to Marburg for two more terms. He received his degree in 1910 from Marburg with a dissertation on the Epistles of St. Paul, written under the supervision of Johannes Weiss. After submitting a habilitation two years later, he became a lecturer on the New Testament at Marburg. Boltman married Helena Feldman on 6 August 1917. The couple had three daughters. Boltman's wife died in 1973. After brief lectureships at Breslau and Gießen, Boltman returned to Marburg in 1921 as a full professor, and stayed there until his retirement in 1951. From autumn 1944 until the end of the Second World War in 1945 he took into his family UTA Rank Heinemann, who had fled the bombs and destruction in Essen. Boltmann was a student of Hermann Gunkel, Johannes Weiss, and Wilhelm Heitmuller. His doctoral students included Hans Jonas, Ernst Casemann, Gunther Bornkam, Helmut Koster, and Ernst Fuchs. He also taught Hannah Arendt. He was a member of the Confessing Church and critical towards Nazism. He spoke out against the mistreatment of Jews, against nationalistic excesses and against the dismissal of non-Aryan Christian ministers. He did not, however, speak out against the anti-Semitic laws which had already been promulgated, and he was philosophically limited in his ability to repudiate, in a comprehensive manner, the central tenets of Nazi racism and anti-Semitism Boltmann became friends with Martin Heidegger who taught at Marburg for five years, and Heidegger's views on existentialism had an influence on Boltmann's thinking. However, Boltmann himself stated that his views could not simply be reduced to thinking in Heideggerian categories, in that, "...the New Testament is not a doctrine about our nature, about our authentic existence as human beings, but a proclamation of this liberating act of God." He died on 30 July 1976 in Marburg. Theological approaches Boltmann's History of the Synoptic Tradition 1921 remains highly influential as a tool for biblical research, even among scholars who reject his analyses of the conventional rhetorical pericopes narrative units which comprise the Gospels, and the historically oriented principles of form criticism, of which Boltmann was the most influential exponent. According to Boltmann's definition, t he aim of form criticism sick is to determine the original form of a piece of narrative, a dominical saying or a parable. In the process we learn to distinguish secondary additions and forms, and these in turn lead to important results for the history of the tradition. In 1941 Boltmann applied form criticism to the Gospel of John, in which he distinguished the presence of a lost signs gospel on which John, alone of the evangelists, depended. His monograph, Das Evangelium de Johannes, highly controversial at the time, became a milestone in research into the historical Jesus. The same year his lecture New Testament and Mythology, the problem of demythologizing the New Testament message called on interpreters to replace traditional supernaturalism demythologize with the temporal and existential categories of Boltmann's colleague, Martin Heidegger, rejecting doctrines such as the pre-existence of Christ. Boltmann believed this endeavor would make accessible to modern audiences 
already immersed in science and technology, the reality of Jesus' teachings. Boltman thus understood the project of demythologizing the New Testament proclamation as an evangelical task, clarifying the kerygma, or gospel proclamation, by stripping it of elements of the first century mythical world picture that had potential to alienate modern people from Christian faith. It is impossible to repristinate a past world picture by sheer resolve, especially a mythical world picture, now that all of our thinking is irrevocably formed by science. A blind acceptance of New Testament mythology would be simply arbitrariness, to make such acceptance a demand of faith would be to reduce faith to a work. Boltman said about salvation and eternity, As from now on there are only believers and unbelievers, so there are also now only saved and lost, those who have life and those who are in death. While Boltman reinterpreted theological language in existential terms, he nonetheless maintained that the New Testament proclaimed a message more radical than any modern existentialism. In both the boasting of legalists, who are faithful to the law, and the boasting of the philosophers, who are proud of their wisdom, Boltman finds a basic human attitude of high-handedness that tries to bring within our own power even the submission that we know to be our authentic being. Standing against all human high-handedness is the New Testament, which claims that we can in no way free ourselves from our factual fallenness in the world but are freed from it only by an act of God, the salvation occurrence that is realized in Christ. Boltman remained convinced that the narratives of the life of Jesus offered theology in story form, teaching lessons in the familiar language of myth. They were not to be excluded, but given explanation so they could be understood for today. Boltman thought faith should become a present-day reality. To Boltman, the people of the world appeared to be always in disappointment and turmoil. Faith must be a determined vital act of will, not a culling and extolling of ancient proofs. Boltman carried form criticism so far as to call the historical value of the Gospels into serious question. Some scholars, such as Craig L. Blomberg, criticized Boltman and other critics for excessive skepticism regarding the historical reliability of the gospel narratives. The full impact of Boltman was felt with the English translation of many of his works, notably Kerygma and Mythos Selected works Die Geschichte der Synoptischen Tradition 1921, 1931. History of the Synoptic Tradition, Harper San Francisco, 1976, ISBN 0-06-061172-3 Seminal work on form criticism Jesus 1926. Jesus and the Word, New York, London, C. Scribner's Sons, 1934, Online Jesus Christ and Mythology, Prentice Hall, 1997, ISBN 0-02-305570-7 Neues Testament und Mythologie, 1941, The New Testament and Mythology and Other Basic Writings, Augsburg Fortress Publishers, 1984, ISBN 0-8006-2442-4 Kerygma and Myth by Rudolf Boltmann and Five Critics, 1953, London, SPCK, HarperCollins. 2000 edition, ISBN 0-06-130080-2-1 contains the essay The New Testament and Mythology with critical analyses and Boltman's response Das Evangelium de Johannes 1941 The Gospel of John, a commentary, Westminster John Knox Press, 1971, ISBN 0-664-20893-2 Theology des Neuen Testaments 1948-53 Theology of the New Testament, complete in one volume Prentice Hall, 1970, ISBN 0-02-305580-4 Das Erkristentum im Rahmen der Antiken Religionen 1949, Primitive Christianity in its Contemporary Setting, Thames and Hudson, 1956. Religion Without Myth co-authored with Carl Jaspers 1954, Myth and Christianity, An Inquiry into the Possibility of Religion Without Myth, Translation 1958 by Noonday Press, Prometheus Books, 2005, ISBN 1-59102-291-6. In this dialogue with philosopher Jaspers, Jaspers first makes the case that Christianity can not be understood apart from its mythical framework, and that myth is necessary form of communication through symbol. Boltman responds that modern scientific analysis of the text is required to separate the genuine from the miraculous claims, thereby revealing the true message.
History and Eschatology, The Presence of Eternity 1954-55 Gifford Lectures, Harper, 1962, Greenwood Publishers, 1975, ISBN 0-8371-8123-2 Notes References Footnotes Bibliography Further reading